Good morning, all of you. Aren't you all so blessed to be here? Do you say thank you, God, for being here? The, it wasn't a resounding yes. Yeah. Okay, can I ask you, why do you feel so blessed? No, one minute. It's uh, 10.35 now, almost, for me by my watch. Or is it 10.30? 10.30. When do we finish? 11.30? So I have an hour with you. You have one hour with me. Now, can I see more light there? If there is possibility, otherwise it's okay. So I was asking you, do you feel every morning blessed to be here today? Why? Why do you feel so blessed? Like I'm feeling very blessed being here today because I'm seeing something unique in my country. Unique islands of entrepreneurship and excellence. Excellence. I'm seeing one of the rare and something which our found, your founder has done and his whole family has done. I've been saying this for many, many years. Friends, without any idea, that you existed here since 1985. And what you used to, I used to say, if every corporate house, if every corporate house adopts and supports a village in India, and we have about, let's say, six lakh villages, operative maybe four lakh villages, and we got many more corporates. And I used to say, as being in, in the uh, government service, I should think, why can't a corporate adopt and support a, and own a village and work with a village? I should think it was common sense. And what I'm seeing today is an amazing miracle, which has happened. And you are, you are you, you, the North doesn't know you much, except your batteries. We all use your batteries. But you, you're not known so much in the North. Why? You don't advertise, you don't speak about yourself. You let your work speak for yourself, isn't it? Yeah. But if you would, what's a harm? Or you don't want so much of limelight. You want to be left alone to continue to do what you would like to do. Is, it, is that the reason? So let me pay my homage to the founder. Thank you so much for doing, you and your family, what you've done for this country. You've set an example for the rest of the world. So do you have a documentary film on your life? You have? Why not? You again don't believe in it? You don't believe in it? You're making one. Aren't you late? You're very late. Anyway, better late than never. Do you have an autograph, autograph, autobiography on your, on your life? You're writing it now? So are you releasing it next year on the foundation day? Next year? It is. Because something which you've done is far ahead of its time. And I think it needs to be replicated. Where, uh, as you very rightly said, business, the first job of the business is to be entrepreneur in, in social work, entrepreneurial in community giving. So I think that's what you did, and that's what the corporate social responsibility is now sending it. Now, friends, after paying my great respect to your founder and the entire family, I have two options for you. I have a presentation on your suggestion for you, on the, for the, your key principles, your core values, which you have fantastic core values. And or I have that, I can begin with that presentation, one. Two, which I've shared with you, with your company. And secondly is, I have a story to tell. I can tell you a story, and then a story which combines all your core values almost all your core values, and then I can come to the presentation, and then we can leave another 15, 20 minutes for the Q&A. Q so we can split the one hour into 20, 20, 20. Do we do 20, 20, 20? All right. All right, let me begin with the story. You can put the presentation, oh, you got the presentation already there. Now let's begin with the first 20 minutes of the story. Your core values, one second. Your core values of your company and of your founder, because he's the, the, the whole institution is built on these core values of innovation, excellence, entrepreneurship, experiences, responsibility, 
and, and yeah, that's right. Five core values, innovation, excellence, entrepreneurship, experiences, and responsibility. Look, these can happen even in government service. While it has happened with our founder, and he set up a whole business entrepreneurship in an empire to the largest good of this country and overseas. I'll, the story of mine is these 20 minutes, which I'm going to tell you about combination of these five. Because these are not isolated. These are intertwined. When you practice core values of responsibility, you are innovative. You have to be working on excellence. You have to be entrepreneurial. And it's coming out of your experiences. Now, the story which I'm going to tell you is how I turned a sick, ailing institution of a prison in Delhi when I became Inspector General Prisons in Tihar Jail. Tihar Jail, my friends, was one of the largest prisons in a democratic world, in a liberal democracy. It had about 10,000 prisoners. What you started to do in 1985, I did it in 1993. 1993, I was posted as Inspector General there, and it was considered a punishment posting. Because for an IPS officer, being in the field in crime law and order, being a commissioner of a district, or being a range is considered prize postings. But for me, to be posted in a prison assignment at that time, not now, that time was considered a punishment posting. I got it. When I got it, I got it for certain reasons which I won't go into, but I got the assignment. Everybody except me and my heart said I was going to the right place. Even my family and my mummy was very, mother was very worried that Kiran, since Kiran is very uh, reformative by nature, now when prisoners get released, they'll all be coming to our doorstep asking for rehabilitation. So what will happen outside my home? Even my mom was worried and gangsters may come violent criminals may come. Or if she does something different, my daughter would be at risk. But only I knew I was going to the same place. I was going to the right place. Why? Because I knew it was an ailing institution. It was a sick institution. 10,000 people mentally very disturbed, all complaining, accusing, abusing, and being violent. And also looking for next revenge. And when I was posted there, first thing I did, was to turn it around. And now these are the five things which are core values are interplaying. So why I want to say is, at your work, values interplay. They are not standalone. You exercise them, but you start paying this as interplay and it becomes you as your personality. What did I do? Now you, it's for you to see which core value came to the fore in my story, which I'm going to tell you the first 20, in the first 15 minutes, 12, 18 minutes left. First thing when I entered the prison, just as your founder stays in the village itself, even his workplace is the village because that's where his heart is. My heart was also inside the prison. My predecessors used to stay away from the posting, from the office. They used to stay in the secretariat, which was next to the chief ministers and the chief secretaries. I decided to stay on the premise itself. So there was a small office there of the Inspector General. I started, I said, I will stick. And they said, ma'am, this is a locked office for years and years. I said, no, open it. I want to be on the premise, be with the prisoners, be with the people. That's what your founder is, with the people. And when, as JK told me, that for, for your founder, it is the people who matter most. So for me, prisoners were people and they mattered to me most. So I started to stay on the, decide to stay on the premise. When I opened the prison, you'll be surprised what happened. Oh, sorry, when I opened the office, you'd be surprised to hear what happened. As I sat on the chair, as I sat on the chair, and I post, put on my desert cooler, which was a desert cooler, it didn't have an air conditioner, it was a desert cooler. And the moment I desert cooler, immediately feathers of a pigeon and a nest flew on my face. Why? Because the uh, desert cooler was housing bird's nest. And it threw all of this on my face. As I sat on the chair, there were little rats going all over my feet. Why? Because it was a rat house. Nobody had sat. So rats were having a, a full time. So did the pigeon. 
So there were the pigeon, there was a nest, and there were rats. Within few days, rats got to know that there's a new occupant. And the pigeons came to know that they no more can they nest because the desert cooler is going to be used. But from there, I used to start my day at nine in the morning. And I used to walk into one prison by not announcement. Without, without a guard, I used to have just one attendant who would hold my papers. And no guard, no uniform, no guns, nothing. So I used to walk my prison every day, nine o'clock, walking the prison. Now, what did I see? I saw mounds of garbage. I saw smelling, stinking places. I saw unclad prisoners. And I saw them all glaring at each other. And some of them were even playing volleyball. And I asked them, who is this group which is playing volleyball? They said, ma'am, these are the gangsters. And this is their gang which is playing volleyball in the prison. So I said, so? He said, ma'am, he's the leader and he's the captain. And they were very, very slow in speaking. But they were even afraid of speaking his name. So that he may not hear. That gangster may not hear that his name has been mentioned. So I said, so, what is his name? He murmured in my head what, you know, what the name was. And he says, ma'am, this gangster ensures they all get cold water to drink. They get, he, he brings them ice and he brings them goodies. So they become, his, and so they are the volleyball. And ma'am, they also massage this youster. The gangster is getting massaged by this team. Oh, see, what happened? I was now listening. I was now learning what is happening because I had not been in the prison before. I didn't know what was wrong. But now, because I was walking the prison, being on the job every day, there's a message in all I'm saying. When you're on your feet daily basis and you've got your, all your five senses open, you are leading towards innovation. You are being entrepreneurial. And you're also being courageous because you're daring to dare. Because other pres other, my colleagues were not entering the prison or they would enter with guards around them. And the announcement in the prison was made, so-and-so, and that's how everybody was attention, and everybody was on head count. Here, there was no I'm just walking into the prison. So friends, this is how I saw time being killed inside. Inside, and here were these 10,000 people, and they were all very curious, what is this woman doing? I used to wear the same kind of dress I'm wearing now, full sleeves, Fully protected, you, they could not know whether I was fat or young or small or big. This was the dress I wore. I never wore a uniform to scare them away. I wanted to co-opt the people into what I'm thinking. So within a few days, guess what happened? Yoga classes started inside the prison. Yoga. From where did the yoga come? Where did the bhakti come? They were close by. I had my old friends from the Delhi Police Times, and I, used to, I asked for help. And yoga from the Brahma Kumaris came. And then came bhakti within five, six days. And as this made newspapers, which you don't, I did. I let the newspaper know that the prison has yoga. Prison has bhakti. I need volunteers. Now I've co-opted people from outside. And sure enough, for 10,000 prisoners, friends, you would believe it, that uh, bhakti started and yoga classes started in the morning. And those, uh, yoga, those volleyball classes stopped. Gangsters went into the gangster ward. Gangsters were not, over, not more, no more allowed. They threatened me also. They threatened me. Dekhte, kya karte ye? Ye kya kar legi ladki? I was the inspector general, not they. So they got into high security prison where they were one to a cell. And what did they get one to a cell? They got the Gita. They got counselors. And they got visitors one to a cell. No more will you increase your gang in the prison. And 9 to 11, everybody was in a school inside the prison. There were used school books. Not, there was no money for teachers and there was no money to buy books and stationery. All this came by community help. My social entrepreneurship started here. That's what I'm saying. You can be both. If you are entrepreneurial, if you're problem solving, you will look for the problem and you become a problem solver. What did I do? I was looking for, I was not going to present for a photo opportunity. There were no cameras inside. But I was looking for what can I do better. 
what can I do more? And how do I, how do I know my innovation? How do I know what is to be innovated? Unless I see, unless I feel, unless I think, unless I hear, unless I do. And from one innovation to the other. Now came a story of how do I know what's going on after I leave the prison? I leave the prison at six in the morning, six in the evening. I, I'm in the prison at nine, but I leave the prison at 6 p.m. What happens after 6 p.m.? How do I know? How do I know? I did a very interesting thing. I do not know whether that exists as a practice for you. I did a feedback box system. And in the feedback box system, friends, was it was a locked box which went around the, uh, uh, around the town. And in the, around the town, and, uh, the entire premises of 10,000 prisoners, every prisoner, any prisoner could write to me a letter. They could write to me in the locked box. Nobody had access in the locked box. Nobody. Nobody had access. Only me as the Inspector General. I had the key. And that would open on the table. All the box, anybody, they were assured. I want no movement here at the moment, friends. Would you please sit down? Because I'm very highly concentrated right now, and I want to focus on what I'm saying. I hope you're all with me. So what happened? In the feedback box, the key was with me. And in the evening, my petition officer and I alone would open the petitions. And I knew exactly what was happening after 6 o'clock. After 6, what happened? I had letters which talked about who took drugs. I had letters who was trying to do what? Nuisance. I, was, I had letters who would say, somebody's simmering a communal riot. I had letters who, would, who was abusing whom? Everything. And I had also letters which say the food was bad, or the water wasn't scarce, or the bread was stale. I knew exactly. Or I also knew the doctor did not attend to somebody who went and wanted money for it. Imagine a senior person without any cameras, without emails, without technology, for me, my box was the petition box. I thought I'll tell you the story, how when you're determined to turn around an institution, one is starting an institution. You can begin with the sculpture which your founder did. It's easy to begin with the culture, but it's very tough to continue with this culture and sustain the culture. That's the credit of this organization. I inherited a negative culture. I had to undo the whole culture, and I had to restart the whole culture. And remember, I'm not present to see what's happening after 6 p.m. But what did I do? Only by going around all the time, winning the trust and hearts and minds of the prisoners, when I would do a prayer in the evening together. Every 6, 5.30 sunset, as you know, prisons have to close and do a head count. I had to, um, did, do, I did a prayer with them. I did, Ay Malik tere bande hum, aise hu hamare karam, neki par chale, badhi se tale, tere haste huye nikle dam. I should sing this prayer every evening with all my prisoners. 2,000 each, they were all divided into four or five prisons. So I should sing the prayer every day. Imagine when the leader sings with the, with the, with the people of their own constituency, what happens? I should sing with them. Never did I lose my hierarchy or my authority. This is how I changed. Now I'm going to take you to uh, the presentation, which has a few glimpses of this, but some things which I've not talked about it yet. But this is how, friends, a stage came when I could take them, take them towards meditation. Uh, why did I take them towards ethical value systems? Because their minds had created their crimes. When the mind is corrected, crimes don't grow. It's in the mind your value system grows, and it's in your mind the value system deteriorates. That means mind management is the key. Mind management is the key to, to sustainability. And awareness is the key to sustainability. So what, how, what did I do? To heighten awareness and to do mind management, I started to do, of course, bhakti in the morning and education for uh, all. Everybody was in a classroom from 9 to 11. 9 to 11, imagine a prison, 10,000 people with all negative culture were studying in a class. 9 to 11, with used school books. I had no money, there was no budget. As I said, prisoners, educated prisoners became teachers. And the used school books donated from outside the schools came to me of all classes. And my prisoners were divided, not into rapists, 
terrorists, thieves, wife beaters, or, uh, uh, or extortions. No, they were, decided, they were divided into illiterate, literate, semi-literate, language knowing, or wanting to learn a, 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 or teach a language. So we divided the prisoners into educators and students. And that is how classes began. Teachers became prisoners. Teachers were the prisoners, were the prisoners, were the prisoners. They were masters, they were graduates, they were lawyers, they were all professions. Prison is a society of people. It represents everybody. And that's how it came. So friends, a day came when they all sat into meditation. I'm going to show you an image. And then what happened? 1994, the most courageous act happened inside the prison. And I could dare to do it. Why? Because I had prepared for it. For a year long, I had prepared to win the hearts and minds and show my intention, just as your founder expresses his intention by his deeds and acts and as his family. So did I. Every day walking the prison, attending to the complaints, genuinely addressing the problems, finding out the solutions, creating to be entrepreneurial, and finding the innovative ways of doing it. This is how, and of course, taking responsibility. As, as Inspector General. Because somebody asked me, why did you do it? I said, it was my responsibility. It was my job. It was my conscience. It was my, since, it was my deed. It was my good karma, which had to be done. I could not have run. Either I take it, or I don't take it. Either I either accept it, or don't accept it. Once you take a responsibility, it belongs to you. It becomes you. So friends, I'm going to show you. And then 1994 came the Ramon Maxese Award from the, uh, the Maxese Foundation in Philippines. What is the Ramon Maxese Award? It's equivalent to the Asian Nobel Peace Prize. And that's what it came for, for whatever was happening in the prisons for the first time ever in the world, where thousands of prisoners sat for a meditation because it's a build-up. It wasn't from day one, it was a build-up. Now let me take you towards the presentation I've got for you, which relates with all your core values. That's why I'm saying you are blessed. You're truly blessed in the sense that you are in a rare organization which states its core values, which, let, which, which makes it known, and then goes about living and sustaining the project. And you also are blessed that you have the living legends still with you to see, feel, hear, and watch them. And then they continue to grow, as I know. The sky's the limit for this organization. So let me take you through a presentation quickly, and then we leave 20 minutes for our Q&A. Where's the, where is the? So this is forward. Okay, let's go. These are your values, aren't they? Aren't they? Read them. Read them. Oh, you can't read. All right, we'll read innovation. Excellence, entrepreneurship, experiences, and responsibility. And see, I'm also in green today. I am here to express my responsibility. So I'm one, of, one with you. And I decided when I looked at this, I chose a green color for you because that's what I do every day is to fulfill my responsibility as a citizen of this country, as an officer of this country, and as a human being of this world. So this is your, these are your areas of core values. This is your innovation. To us is proactively rebelling for better ways of doing things leading. So what is my story telling you? What is my story telling you? The story is the evidence of living your core values. I found my own ways. You have to find your own ways at work on a daily basis. It's not a holiday. There's no holiday in it. Did I tell you I missed a single day? I didn't miss a single day at work. It, there is no holiday in responsibility. But innovation comes to us, is proactively rebelling for, it's yelling and rebelling and working for better ways of doing things leading to newer possibilities. As I explained to you as evidence. Excellence. Excellence to us is continually enhancing our performance to consistently produce outstanding results with lasting impact. I've already shared my story. Exactly what is proving this is that this is lasting impact. And I told you, which was internationally recognized. Excellence could not have come if I had not gone to the prison every day, looking for continually enhancing our performance. Even garbage was turned into manure there. Now comes entrepreneurship. 
Entrepreneurship to us is leading with courage, with conviction to convert gaps into opportunities, create wealth and contribute to grow. I'll explain to you as the scenes come and I'll show you how I did it. Experiences to us are what we create for our stakeholders, which make them feel part of something special, leading to enduring relationships. And responsibility to us is the total ownership, total ownership of our thoughts and actions in every situation to achieve maximum common good in the best interest of environment, society, customer, supplier, employee, and shareholders. This is thanks to your founder, you got this great, the right keywords. Here is my first example of which I have not talked about yet. I was a tennis player, friends, and being in the tennis, many times as a tennis player, I played many championships in Hyderabad. Some of you were not even born at that time, but parents saw it. There were hardcore championships, um, fantastically in Andhra Pradesh, and I used to come all the way from Amritsar then to comp compete here. And some fantastic audiences and spectators we used to have. And I learned a bit of Telugu also because I used to travel a lot and pick up some rickshaws and three wheelers, and I picked up the Dabuile. See, so I used to say Dabuile. We would say so much money, I would say no, Dabuile. I don't have money. So I learned some of these words. Now, why am I looking this, showing you this as a tennis? Many times, friends, being in Amritsar, I did not have tennis courts easily available, or I was in a situation where tennis court wasn't available. What did I do? My father used to do, make me do shadow practice. And then I used to hit against a wall. So I used to find a wall to play, and I used to also do shadow practice. And my father would stand on the side and say, cross court, backhand, drop shot, overhead shot, right? Down the line. And I used to play down the line. I used to do my footwork. This is what my father did. That's called innovation. How, without a tennis court, I am practicing my footwork. I am playing shadow practice. Or I'm hitting against the wall. And many championships, I won one doing shadow practice. Or, or doing hitting against the wall. And somebody said, you didn't have a tennis court at that time because Amritsar was a tier two city. Or it had two tennis courts and they were all very crowded and boys alone would be there. So friends, this is where I thought I'll bring you a personal image because I was, in, I was suggested I should share with you a personal story. Here's excellence. Excellence is a wonderful area and I'll give, give you this beautiful story of the tea mantra I gave to Pondicherry as a lieutenant governor of Pondicherry, which I left two years ago. When I took charge, I was made aware. And when the prime minister called me and said, Kiran, would you like to join uh, work as uh, lieutenant governor of Pondicherry? I said, sir, I would be very happy to serve. It would be a great idea. Do you know what, thing, what he said? Kiran, you would not, some of you may not understand Hindi. I'll translate for you in English. He said, Kiran, he said, Kiran, once you go there, take care of finances. Now, I was wondering, I was not tr keeping track of what's going on in Pondicherry, but obviously, there was a financial misappropriation in a big way, in many, many ways. So, this is what was happening. I guess that's the reason I was spent there, sent there to take on the system. Maybe he knew I would take on the system. If, and he would send me, he would actually, he threw me to the wolves. It was truly, truly to the wolves. Say, go fight the wolves, the wolves of misappropriation. And they're very, very vicious. So when I took oath, friends, the first mantra I gave to the politicians of the day and to the people of the day and the media through the media, I said, I will give you all a tea mantra. What is the tea mantra? Tea mantra meant trust, empowerment, and accountability. The tea mantra. So I told them, I will be trustworthy, I'll remain accountable, but I'll empower you all to speak out anything. But come and brief, come and share, but, and participate. I am going to be trustworthy, but I'm going to trust you till you break the trust. And I shall empower you to say what you want. Ask what you want. Ask. And uh, the rest was accountability. Means I shall take my decisions. You, and if I ask you to take some decisions, I shall be 
accountable. So don't say, oh, she did it, he did it. No, I asked them to do it and they did it. So accountability, I gave them all a tea mantra called, this was the oath ceremony on the day I took over as Lieutenant Governor. The tea mantra, trust, empowerment and accountability. And if, imagine, if all of us live up to these, this takes care of everything. Then comes entrepreneurship. This was a time when I was DCP traffic friends, and traffic was in a mess in 1982. In 1982, the, uh, there was no traffic cranes in that time. And there were roads littered with overturned buses, trucks, cars parked wrongly, and the roads were all clogged. So people would drive and drive and drive, and they would get obstructed, and there would be diversions, and there would be road traffic jams. When I took over charge as DCP traffic, I did not know the roads of Delhi. I was just given the charge. But it was not a punishment posting. It was a trusting post. post. The lieutenant governor at that time, Mr. Khurana, who became the uh, governor of Tamil Nadu once, he called me one day and said, Kiran, well, you, would you like to work? Can you take over as DCP traffic? I was only about 30, 32 years old at that time. And he said, I said, sir, but I don't know Delhi roads. How will I run the entire Delhi traffic? He said, no, no. Asian Games is coming, 1982 Asian Games. I want you, that was the year 1981. I had no choice when the governor tells you, you have to go. Guess what I did? Exactly what I did in prison. Every 8 a.m., now it's not 9. 8 a.m., I would leave my home to walk, to drive the streets of Delhi. And I used to drive the streets of Delhi to understand the problem. It was while driving the streets of Delhi did I rec recognize there was no vehicle available to remove the broken down vehicles. And guess what I did? I hired all private cranes which were available in Delhi. All hired cranes. And what did I do? I didn't pay them anything. I said, you will be paid by the, by the, the car owner for the, for, the, for the wrongly parked car, and I will do a traffic chalan. So you will get the money for a car which we tell you to tow, and we will do a prosecution. And guess what? I had cranes and cranes all over Delhi. And that's how I became on the street with Crane Bedi. I lost my name. It became from Kiran Bedi to Crane Bedi. <laughs> but the method was to hire cranes which were available. So isn't this entrepreneurship? Isn't this innovation? There's so many things, as I said, it's all intertwined, friends. But again, the reason is you go to the problem. You are always open in your mind to find out what can I do better today? And what can I do better today is exactly what I did in the prisons walking at 9 a.m. What can I do better today? In traffic, 8 a.m., what can I do better today? So always, what can I do better? Because what you did yesterday is over. Now it's a today. So it's a crane baby. That's all. And by the way, it also took away the prime minister's car. At that time, Mrs. Indira Gandhi's car was also towed away and also fined. That's the first time it created history. And by the way, two months after I was transferred, but that doesn't matter. <laughs> but question here is, the, this was done. So friends, all this requires raw courage. Oh, somebody told me, aren't you afraid? I said, afraid of what? You might be transferred. I said, transfer to another part of India. That's great. India is very beautiful. I'm willing to go anywhere. So friends, this is how it became an example of entrepreneurship. Your core value, I in practice. So here's another one. Here's the experiences I told you about. This is an example of 1,000 prisoners into meditation. Same prisoners who were gangsters and playing volleyballs, etc., came into meditation programs. And these were all 1,000 prisoners in meditation. And this is what actually this is forever in history of Indian prisons all over the world, all over the world, where 1,000 prisoners could sit down together and meditate and had no problems. No guns, no firing, no, no running away, but they all sat for a meditation program, and that's how it changed. So friends, this is called, how did I experience this? It was by walking the streets, experiencing it. What is it that they need? Once you go through this, it's all then looking for right kind of solutions. And all this was voluntary work because all the teachers, all the, all the mentors came volunteering to work in the 
to our prison because uh, there was no spending money. It was all volunteerism. Let's go to the next one, responsibility. Friends, just as you have a corporate social responsibility started much before the CSR 2% came, you started to, your father, your founder started to donate 2% of his hard-earned income into community giving. I also started a foundation in 1986. 1986, this is the foundation which I set up in Navjyoti India Foundation. It started in 1986 to educate street children. Why did I do? I was a police officer. What have I to do with street children? Of course I've got everything to do with street children because they were indulging drugs. They were indulging in thefts. They were indulging in burglary. They were not going to school. They were uh, the extension of their mother's drug trafficking. So, and they had no school in the localities. And it was crime infested. So to do crime prevention, not crime detection. How many can I arrest? How many can I arrest? I went to the root of the problem. Very important thing is, when you are at work and you identify an issue, go to the root of the problem. That's what I did. In this case, I went to the root of the problem that they, are, they have no uh, school or they have no means of income because women were selling drugs. So I opened Silai centers, skills development, and schools for them. And I started school, and today, Navjyoti is reaching out to thousands and thousands of people in that area, in the locality of Delhi and elsewhere. It is in skill. So I'm giving you a, a group picture, latest group picture of what we did. And the second foundation, called India Vision Foundation, came out of my prison work. It came out of my prison work when I was, as I told you, I started a school for children inside the prison. You might ask me why. Why? Because there were children who had come with the women, their mothers, and they were up to the age of four and five. And they were all talking about murders and pickpocketing, and they all had the modus apprendi, how can they pickpocket? When I saw them, I asked my staff, what are these children doing in prison? Why are they not in school? They said, ma'am, there's no school. I said, okay, then you open a school. We said, where do we open the school? I said, in the same women barrack, we will carve out a place till we have a proper school. We carved out a barrack, a place for children to go to school. And the, they would go to school from eight till about two o'clock and not go with the mothers to the prison. And they ought to the courts. In the courts, they were going with the mothers to the court. And they would say, Jagte Roho, or they would say, Teen Sodo, or uh, the Mulakat. And they, all these children were hearing this language. We took away that and put the children into school. And you know what? This school is still running inside the prison. I left the work in 1995. <laughs> and when I got the Ramon Maxese Award, I dedicated that award to the setting up of a new foundation for prison reforms in India. And we are about doing prison reforms in the entire country now. We are training prison officials in the entire country online, and we're working directly with men, women, and youngsters in more than 40 prisons in northern India. See, this is how it came as response. Now, why did you say responsibility? That's exactly what your founder thought. He, the business is a responsibility. Business is a large, and that's what exactly he said, every business is a social entrepreneurship responsibility. And that's why I said every government service servant can do what I did. All I did was expand my area of influence. That's it. So two foundations. You see those children down below? They're all children of prisoners who are being educated and schooled by us. And we have them all sponsored. They go to skills development value-based edu education, computer learning, and there are hundreds of them today in, my, in this India Vision Foundation. So friends, this is how my area of responsibility also came. So friends, success has a ripple effect. Remember that growth and change are all woven into the evolution of life. Being a better version of yourself has a positive impact on everyone, including your friends and family. And that's what your company is a product of. You constantly evolve yourself. You constantly make a better version of yourself. And that's why it has a positive impact on the Amara group as it is, as I see. So remember what's in your, in your control. In your control is only, is o where do I go back? Okay. So what is in your control? 
your control is words thoughts response awareness and how i treat others this is only only in our control what's not in our control is the past the result the future and what others think of me or others opinion so remember you are in control so be watchful because that's what you in is out is in your control so personal life remember these are my little nuggets for you before i have a minute and a half is meditation silence is very very important find a way to dedicate yourself to some minutes of silence on a daily basis and that silence gives you gives you inner audit it gives you the composure and balance of mind it also makes you think ahead it also makes you cool down a little and also makes you a self audit gratitude and remember i said aren't you grateful positive thinking remember the higher purpose higher purpose of whatever you're doing remain a learner constantly upskill focus on self care your health giving and sharing collaboration simplicity and acceptance these are the key qualities if you look at them and practice them and sustain them you will always be a better version of yourself these are your personal person, personal life on professional life continue to upskill network with integrity remain proactive be a solution provider be willing to change for the better you can expand them but i don't have the time for it but you can and these are yours for the professional life how will you stay ahead that's what your theme is so you will stay ahead by self learning you will stay ahead by focus on customer service you will stay ahead by living daily the core values of your company and love and enjoy your work the most that is what will keep you ahead and i'm sure this is going to take you ahead more and more compared to many many others is self learning focus on customer service daily live daily the core live daily and live and enjoy your work have a look at this that's your road to success and that's what is this a comp a product of your company is a product of all these grateful to you sir for what you set is you and your family thank you so much you're a great a great example i look forward to seeing your documentary and reading your autobiography one day because that will be great lessons and experience learning for all others thank you we got another 19 minutes almost for question answers that's my third part as i promised you 20 2020 all right question answers your questions and i'll try and answer if i can or i'll take the help of your founder okay question if you heard if you not heard no questions Don't worry about your English accent. Go ahead and speak. Mic there. Mic. Madam, uh, yesterday when you interacted with the woman, I come back with the mic with you for you. Yeah. Yesterday when you interacted with the woman, you gave some very insightful tips on parenting, and especially with so many parents and my children who are also one of them is a parent. Now I was one, wondering if you could share that with our audience. You have to tell me, remind me the question because okay. you asked me many questions. Okay. So we asked about how to raise uh, uh, strong children. they strong children yes oh that was the most challenging question which was asked how do we raise strong children both girls and boys yes. how do we raise good boys 
I think the question could be, how do we raise good boys? And how do we raise strong girls? Question is, how do you raise good boys? How do you raise strong girls? The question here is, how do you raise good boys by making them do what your founder did? What did he do? He took your brothers at the age of 11 to the factory. Did he? Yes. He took his sons, and I'm told by uh, JK, that he, he, he took his 11-year-old boys, are they here? Grandchildren. He took his son or you? Us, you took you all. Am I right? This is what they did. That's why they're good boys. Are you good boys? Yeah. How do you make good boys? Is teach them responsibility when they're young. Make them do things when they're young. When they make them helpful when they're young. Respect money when they're young. Make them hardworking when they're young. Make them follow the rules of the family when they're young. Come back home for dinner when they're young. Look at, be very careful with the kinds of friends they have when they're young. Respect for women when they're young. That makes them good boys. Because you are giving uh, mobility, space to the boys. So, they, so that they value the space and mobility by doing all these when they are young. So have them as good boys. When they grow up, they are responsible for what they've inherited from their parents. And they carry it forward as a legacy. They feel it's responsible to, to value what is inherited from mother and father. When they are young. And girls, how you make them good, a girl, not good, girls are already good. <laughs> make them brave girls, courageous girls. How do you make them courageous girls? Is what, how, what my parents made me how. At the nine-year-old, I was a tennis court. Made me play. And then, never protected me to that extent. Made me cycle in the city. Made me travel in the train. Made me travel with the groups and play with boys and girls. Made me compete equally. Made me, gave me responsibility. And protected me without sheltering me all the time. So friends, you make girls strong and courageous when you allow them space without losing, keeping the, without losing sight. So you are making them exactly what I've told you, what you give to the boys naturally. Give to the girls what you give to your boys. And give to the boys what you give to the girls. That's how you do it. You make your boys responsible and you make your girls courageous. And what does the world need today? World needs both equally sensitive and equally courageous. You need sensitive boys and you need courageous girls. That's how they'll be entrepreneurial. And India needs it today. If you want to be a five trillion economy in the coming years now, you're already heading to be four trillion. In the five trillion economy, you will have to have women and boys, boys and girls, men and women, sensitive and brave, and entrepreneurial, and responsible, and innovative, and value-based. And that will happen to only when mother and father work together. And extended families are present. The grandparents and the parents work together, along with the teachers playing the baton, playing, taking the relay. That's the, the way to it. So th this cannot be girls in one form, girls controlled, boys not controlled. You have to control both and give space to both. Control both, space both, equally. Educate them the, to the highest, skill them to the highest, and let marriage happen. Let marriage happen without any give and take. Marriages must happen without give and take. You want to give to your children, girls? Give fixed deposits, which is pension for them. Fixed deposits so that when they are into the pensionable age, they get earn a pension for themselves. They get a sense of security. But don't waste it. Don't waste it on consumption. Put it as investment into their pensioning accounts, which gives them a sense of security, but not in cashable while they're young. That's a safe deposit by the parents for their security of girls. Boys will anyway earn. But girls may decide not to earn or may not. But why should women stop earning? I want to have a question. 
Why not? Why not have family support systems? Why not create social support systems by which both earn? Because unless both earn, how will the family have higher quality of life? Because the women earning is a right because they've access, they have learned to express themselves. Don't clip their wings. Don't clip the wings of the girls and boys, girls particularly, who want to earn for themselves. And all they have to do is they run their homes together. Husband and wife run the homes together. Share the time together. Share the home responsibilities together. Take the help of the extended families together. Have support systems together. It's togetherness which will be the secret of success of India's higher productivity. Not girls staying back after being very skilled and say, because I have to now make the children grow. No. I have also suggested to her for a concept called day boarding schools, where you have a day boarding school where children finish their homework in the school. Children finish their homework in the school. They study their reading. They do remedial learning. No more tuitions back home. If, even if for the JEs, etc., classes are held in the day boarding, and they go home without the bag. Let the children go to the school uh, home without their bag. No bag. Go and play and talk and meet your parents. No bags. It should be a no bag home school. So if you have a day boarding school where sports, music, extra learning, book reading, etc., it's all happened in the school. This is the kind of schools you need to keep girl, women at work. To keep women at work, you now need day boarding school so that the mother does not run back home to look after the homework of the child. What do you think? What do you think? So going for day boarding schools so that when the child comes back home, there's no conflict with the parents to say, homework, karo, homework, karo, homework, karo. Ma'am, there's no homework. Bag is in the home. Bag is at the school. So what do you do? You chat, you have fun, you have listened to the music, do your book reading, and be with the parents for the early dinner, and have an early dinner, and go to bed, bed early. This can be a life-altering way of doing if we have to keep our women productively at work. Maybe Amara can handle. Sir, is it possible? Maybe you could do this. Only you can do this. You can set the way, you have set the so many trends, you can set this trend through your daughter because she's handling your education too. What do you say? Is it possible? So, can you give, them, give him a mic, please? I did that one when I was a child. Sorry? I did the same thing when I was a child. You did the same thing. Look at that. That's what you did. And that's what you are. Then I made my children to do the same thing. Yes. If they don't do it, the teacher will punish it. <laughs> then in our, in our factory also, we made them to recognize they had to do their own work. If they don't do it, they will do their own punishment. Exactly. Because the incentives are there. They don't do it, they won't get it. That's right. Uh, therefore, it is making them to realize what they have to do, their responsibility, yeah. that makes them a lot more comfortable. That's right. They don't have to, as you said, you don't waste the time. And when you go home and enjoy it, I always tell them, don't carry anything with you. You leave your bag in the office, don't carry it on your back. So you were so much ahead of your time. Thank you. Thank you so much. And what has the mummy to say? What has the moms to say? What has the mummy to say? What is Mrs. Gala to see? Say. I always think women are um, same, like, uh, and uh, boys and girls are same. One time, they got uh, progress cards. Rama got three C's. And uh, Jaydev got one C. Um, and my husband scolded my son. And um, you know, in a Telugu, Vedava, why you got one C? You know, and then uh, Rama shows uh, her progress card. She got three C's. And um, 
very good rama <laughs> <laughs> you did very well and the rama got upset and then why then i asked her your father uh, support you and then why you are uh, uh, very sad and she said um jaydev got one c and uh, he scolded him and then i got three c's and he didn't care about me and he said very good rama you got a nice progress card <laughs> <laughs> so you had a great sense of humor <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's what uh, we raised the, our kids but i always uh, telling rama you have to ahead of your class and you have to learn this learn that and also when i got my um, child rama she born and then i put uh, her name is rama devi and then uh, my father want to put her sarva mangala mm. because uh, she born in uh, uh, tuesday and then i said why you go you, you want to rama devi i said my daughter have to become a doctor and uh, everybody calls dr rama devi is going to be very respectable and then uh, why, why how do you know your uh, daughter is going to become a do- doctor i said i want to raise her like that mm. and then she became a doctor now that's right <laughs> so they're living your dreams and your vision yeah and my son and he always uh, uh, he wants to be a politician like my father <laughs> my father was mp uh-huh. and then um, my my husband wants to become he is an engineer and uh, that is his wish he want to be an engineer and then um, first my and he joined in a prestigious college my son and then my uh, after 3 years he changed into the uh, subject in the political and business management mm. and my husband didn't speak to him 2 years oh <laughs> and also he didn't even sleep one year <laughs> why he he became like this and like that you know and then i thought i want to be my son like mp and he became a mp <laughs> that is my dream and also i want to uh, come to india um can i speak to in telugu no you understand i don't no. <laughs> <laughs> because i won't understand but you can speak for others if you wish it's okay it's okay mm-hmm. and um we came to india and then my um husband went to in the went to the business i went to the politics that is my father's wish mm. and when we asked my father told and uh, naina you do your business and uh, let uh, she can be a politician mm. and that's why we came and then uh, we run the business and then i didn't uh, i didn't put any efforts on this business because mm. my husband is doing and then uh, i am only went in the politics and that's what i i heard you know now and i got in your speech you went to the prisons uh, and then you are always going to the prison and look it like that and i i also became a mla at that time it is uh, very hurdles i i facing and then i also every day i am touring to the villages and i meet the people mm. i am meeting the people wonderful now also i am meeting the people always i am talking to the people yes i go to the people and villages and everywhere that is a new experience for me and when i go to the villages and uh, some dalit wards also all ladies are first they said and they got uh, i got one uh, wrong uh, some uh, some people are uh, so uh, long pub- uh, publicity you know because she is in the america and uh, now she is coming and she became a politician mm. how she is going to move the people how she is going to mm. do the uh, work mm. you know she is uh, always in the ac rooms now we got a very hot here 
and I think uh, we think they, she doesn't have to, she, she don't work like that, like that, you know, they, they're wrong publicity on me. But uh, when I was, became a MLA and uh, I'm touring the villages and everything, and everybody is uh, very surprised. That's why I became a uh, MLA and uh, five, five times I uh, became MLA and also three times, almost 10 years, I was the minister. Mm -hmm. That is my success. Mm -hmm. Thank very you. Very nice. But very re wonderful family where m father and mother, they both had different professions. Each end did conflict with each other. Very rare combination. That's why we look forward to, sir, your biography, autobiography, or a biography, and a documentary film. So, f sorry. I written already my autobiography. That is, uh, I think I'm going to, I finished it already, but that is going in the printing process. Oh, great. That's yours. Yeah, mine. Mine. And be looking for Dr. Ramachandras. We're looking for Dr. Ramachandras also. We're looking for Dr. Galas. I'm looking for Dr. Galas from the business point of view, while we will have your wives from the politician point of view. Yes, exactly. I never in, entered politics. We only talk the social things at home. Yeah. No politics, no business. Very rare combination. <laughs> when I come to the office, my, my business. And I go home as a family. So the pair children are getting the best of the both, is it? <laughs> exactly, they enjoyed it. Wow, very rare combination. So all the more, therefore I'm saying your autobiography will do a lot of good where you can tell us about what happened at home. Yeah, I'm trying to take somebody's help to write to you, autobiography. Very nice. I'm explaining him, he's not explaining how great I am. Just recall. I am really... Narrating my experience, so yes. we can help the other people to understand. Exactly. Starting from my childhood, all That's the right. way as I'm today. Correct. So grateful. Wonderful meeting this illustrious, illustrious family, your illustrious team members, all of you, and this company. You know, ever since I put it on my social media handle that I'm coming to you, one after the other said, what a fantastic company you're going to. That's your goodwill, which you've earned. I am really, truly honest and privileged to be with you today. Thank you once again for this invitation. Thank you, my time's up. Thank you very much. Thank you and Jai Hind.